Right, how many of you were here last Sunday? Give me a wave, you were here last Sunday. All right, how many of you remember the photo that I showed of me and my mates cruising up and down Dean Street? Here we are, have a look at this motley crew. So dad, my father, he was a father literally to all of these boys. He would take all of us out camping and shooting and fishing. And, and I, I, told, I told him that I was going to be up this weekend. Dad and I are going to go up. The reason is here is afterwards we're going to go to Albury, have a couple of nights together. They all said, we want to see your dad. We want to see your dad because he made such an uh, impact in their lives when we were young. We went to Albury a couple of weeks ago, cruising up and down Dean Street. Everyone say Dean Street. Dean Street. Cruising up and down Dean Street. And I've got to tell you, a whole lot of memories just came flooding back. It was so cool to get up there with my friends. So we went out the weir and so you go out the weir and Bethanga Bridge, let's go to the weir. So this is the weir that's probably 10 mile, 16K, 15K from where we actually grew up. We grew up, I grew up on there. But I, said, I used to race yachts with dad and uh, he was like Captain Bly. <laughs> I still get in over the scarring, you know what I'm saying? He was like, walk the plank, Shane, walk the plank. And I'm like, yes, Dad, yes, okay. So, but we grew up fishing and shooting and doing everything on that lake. So we're out there fanging around. Then we went back into Albury. There's a river between Albury and Wodonga called the, come on, Australia Day is coming, called the, the Murray River, praise God. That's the Murray. Is that a river you want to swim in every day of your life or what? And so on all these trees here, there's none on this tree, these trees, but many of these trees have got ropes on them. And so you, you just play Tarzan all day long as a teenager. It was so much fun. And then we went up to the monument. Let's go to the top of the hill, Monument Hill in Albury. And then from, uh, then from the city, you look up to the monument and there it is. And so that's it. Keep up, boys. Keep up. Keep up. All right. So, 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 but you know what? Here's the deal. Doesn't matter where you go in Aubrey. How many of you know regional Victoria, or regional Australia? How many of you know if it's a legit re regional area, all roads around there all lead to one place and it is the place of the golden arches? <laughs> Praise God. How many of you know every country town has a McDonald's? If it's a real country town. And so everywhere leads to McDonald's. Now this car park here, this is a significant car park. See this, see this little red car here? Uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you remember your very first date? You know, it's a guy and girl going out. So you know why no one's raising their hand? Because it wasn't with your spouse. Am I, you went out, oh, that's beautiful. Let's give it up for these guys in the front row. In fact, why don't we give them a prize? Can someone go get them a cold can of drink? that they can share. <laughs> so, how many of you remember your first date? <laughs> you guys just aren't gonna play, are you? It's like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not admitted to anything. My very first date, where do I go? To the famous Scottish restaurant called McDonald's. Yeah. All right, so how many of you know, when, when you're 16, the same as you guys, when you're 16 years of age and you only got $10, that's it, you know what I'm saying? So you take the girl to the movies, and then where do you go? You go to Macca's. Now we're on a double date. We're standing out the front, literally right here. And as I'm standing there, this car goes past and it's got a yacht on the back, similar to what Captain Bly used to sail with me and we used to race this thing. And, and how many of you know when you're 16 and you're looking to impress, you'll reach for anything? You know what I'm saying? Any story will do. It's like, hey, hey. And it's like, so here I'm 16 in the car park. This car's going past with this yacht on the back. As it goes past, I pointed like that and said, my father and I used to, like that, just like that, race a yacht like that, just as it went past. What I didn't realise in the other, coming from the other direction, is a mini minor with three baboons in it. You know what I'm saying? Baboons, they were the biggest, ugliest, meanest looking guys you have ever come across. Three baboons are going the other way. Just as I've gone like that. What do they think? They think I'm pointing at them. They took offence at me pointing at them. So what do they do? They did a U-turn. In regional, in, in regional Victoria, we don't call it a U-turn. We you chuck a U-E. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So they chucked a U-E. They came back to teach me some etiquette. They get out of the car. Now, I'm not short, but I was the shortest there. <laughs> now, remember, we're on a double date. Two guys, two girls. I look to my mate, I'm thinking there's three of them, there's two of us, <laughs> two girls, they could go. Uh, and so, but, but there's at least two guys. I look to my mate and he has gone. <laughs> like, no, he's left the, he's gone, he ran away. 
the two girls are there and they're like, <laughs> so it's like, all right, I'm standing there facing these three baboons. The biggest is in the middle. He steps forward and he starts in my face. He's like, what are you doing pointing at us? I said, I wasn't pointing at you. I was pointing at the yacht. I'm just 16. I'm a kid. I'm just pointing at the yacht. Now, let's just say he did not believe me. I could tell by what he said to me. I won't repeat that. But he did not believe me. He's got a ciggy in his right hand. How many of you know a ciggy? He got a ciggy because he's out with his mates cruising around the mini minor. And so he gets his ciggy that's in the right hand and he puts it in the left hand. I should have realised when the ciggy was transferred from the right hand to the left hand, he's probably planning to do something with his other hand. And so I'm thinking to myself, the ciggy's being transferred. I should be thinking about the fact that the next minute, bang, right in my face. In fact, his fist entered into my mouth. It was like, the dentists have been there before, but not generally people, you know what I'm saying? But his fist, boom, right in my face. I could feel my lips beginning to swell up instantly. It's like, blah, 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 blah. I, I look to the girls and I, they're, they're, they're gone now too. The guy's gone, the girls are gone. And I look back and how many of you, how many of you ever felt like you're about to die? That's how I felt. I look back at them and I'm thinking, I'm about to die. So what do you do when you get nervous? What do you do when you get nervous? Some people sweat. Some people start scratching like a dog. What, what do you do when you get nervous? You know what I do? I laugh. I laugh. I didn't mean to laugh at the gentleman. I just started laughing. I said, <laughs> He goes, you know what he said to that? He goes like this. He goes, we don't want any trouble. He just punched me in the face. And now he's saying, we don't want any trouble. So they hop in their car and they take off. Two minutes later, my dad and his mate, Martin, they pull into the car park. The four of us jump in the back seat because that's illegal and it's what you do, you know what I'm saying? Because we're on a double date. We're all in the back seat. And I'm on my lips, are going, I'm talking a bit funny. And dad goes, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I just got punched in the face. He goes, what have I told you about fighting when you're out with girls? <laughs> well, what do you think I did? Hit him in the fist with my face? Have you ever felt like you're just trying to get on with life and you're copping a punch in the face? Have you ever felt like you're just trying to, just trying to do life, but it's like something, someone just keeps coming after you and coming after you and coming after you and you're just trying to do life and do it well, but it's just like there, there just seems to be an enemy on every corner, everywhere you go. It's like someone is striking and someone is having a go at you. Friends, on face value, this is just a story about three baboons punching a kid in the face on face value. But how many of you know we shouldn't always take things on face value? If we take everything on face value, the chances are we're gonna miss out on what is really going on. If anyone who works with me knows that I say, rarely is the issue the issue. And sometimes it's not what it appears to be. I think sometimes we just look at everything like, well, well it's just what it is. It's never just what it is. It's never just what it is. It's like the time I was riding my pushy down Dean Street. Praise God for Dean Street. I love Dean Street. I'm riding my pushy. I'm 16 years of age, skinny little kid riding down Dean Street. These four hoons come hooning past me, cut me off. The passenger gets out and punches me in the face and throws my bike down the street. It's like, what's wrong with this face that everybody wants to punch it? How many of you think it's a punchable face? It's not, it's not the best, but I've seen worse. I'm looking at a few. You know what I'm saying. I've seen, how many of you have seen worse faces? Just raise your hand and give me some encouragement right now. What's wrong with my face that everybody wants to punch it? It's like the time we're down in Dean Street. We're down in Dean Street again. This time I'm a little bit older than 16. What are we doing down there? We're street witnessing. We're on the streets telling people about the love of Jesus. This dude, his name is Graham. He comes up to me and he goes, you got to stop this. I'm going to go get a knife and I'm going to come back and kill you. I said, whatever. Go get your knife. Shouldn't this, be careful what you say. Just be careful. Seriously, two minutes later, he steps out of a shop 
not with a knife, with two knives. <laughs> and he starts chasing me up and down Dean Street. I'm running for my life, screaming like a little girl. Ah! This guy's, ah! he's coming after me. So what do you do? Well, being the brave warrior that I am, I saw my mates across the road, I ran across to them, and then he started chasing them and I went and hid. <laughs> How many of you know that's wisdom right there? All right. There's a time to stand and fight, there's a time to run and hide, like, you know, so. So, you know what's really sad about this story, that story, that Graham? Three weeks later, he killed a girl. Just, just literally in the park across the road. He cut her from ear to ear, they found her naked in, in the garden. He went to jail for a long time. It's like the time. <laughs> How many of you know country people are warm and hospitable? It's like the time I was in Dean Street on a, on a Friday night, probably about 11 o'clock. I've been working with Dad's mate. Dad had some interesting mates. We're going to go see him probably. So we're working for Dad's mate. All right, so the first week of school experience, you know, work experience at school, the first week I was working with a plumber. Praise God for plumbers. Are there any plumbers in the house? <laughs> None. <laughs> That's because Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> Are there any carpenters in the house? Yeah, they're everywhere. All right, so I worked with a, a plumber. Then I worked with a solid plasterer. Martin says to us on the way in, Shane, see that guy over there? Put it at you, Reuben, because you look like him. <sighs> so, so, you see that guy over there? I'm like, yeah. He goes, do not talk to him. Really? Shane, don't talk to him. Okay. He goes, see that guy there? Yeah, don't mess with him. Don't mess with him. Okay, I won't mess with him. He goes, see that guy there? Yeah. He goes, when you sit down for morning tea and for lunch, if he is in this room, you go to the next room. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, whatever. Because how many of you know when you're 16, you know lots of stuff? <laughs> you're well educated in the things of the world. So I knew it all, whatever. So I worked with him for a week. Friday night comes along, 11 o'clock. We're hooning down Dean Street because that's all there is in Albury, Dean Street. We're going down Dean Street. I yell out to my new friend from work. Hey! Next minute, he jumps off the bonnet with his two mates and they're in the car and they start chasing us. How many of you have seen Dukes of Hazard? For the next half hour, it was like the Dukes of Hazard all over Albury. We're jumping over railways and jumping over bridges and up and down the streets of East Albury. And then we go up into this court and they pull in and they block the court off. I'm thinking, oh, this will be all right. But then they all hop out and they smash the bottles of beer that they had on the ground and they start, start coming down to our car. And I knew we were in trouble. It's like, they, they were ready to party. And it's like, <laughs> hop out. I'm like, hey, it's me. <laughs> Where's the street light? Hey, it's me. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? It's shame, shame, shame. It's shame. He goes, oh, why didn't you say so? I'm like, because you were chasing us and you were going to kill us. Now, in the natural, all these things are just crazy events that happen in a town called Aubrey. But are they just crazy events that happen in a town called Aubrey? In your life, in all the things that are going on where the enemy is coming, 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 coming. Are they just natural events or is there something greater happening behind them? Friends, I want to encourage you today as we get ready for the 2017. You need to be aware of the enemy's schemes and the enemy's plans. Because if, you, if you've got a sniff of God, if you've got a sense that the kingdom of God is coming your direction, I've got to tell you, the enemy is going to come out after you and he's going to punch you in the face and punch you in the face and he's going to come with knives and he's going to come with broken bottles. He's going to come with anything he can. He's going to come and come and he's going to keep on coming. Keep on coming. We look at it in the natural and they're just crazy moments. But friends, I want to remind you today that the, the Bible is very, very clear about certain things. Some of us feel like we're getting punched over and over and over again. And I was like, man, I, I, just, I don't know how much more I can handle of this. In our relationships, we're getting punched. In our finances, we're getting punched. In our uh, relationships, boom. In our emotions, boom. In our physical, boom. In our, in it's just like one punch after another. It's like, I don't know how much more I can take of this. But you know what? As part of us, as we're getting worn down, it's like, it's just the way it is. It's not just the way it is. 
You need to understand behind all this stuff, there are principalities and powers at work that... Uh, principalities and powers. Really is it what it appears to be? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and the authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Okay, so we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against an army, an army of spiritual powers that are set on fulfilling their commander's goals. All right, how many of you know, when it comes to all the spiritual powers, they have a commander. We know him as the devil. We know him as Satan. We know him as Lucifer, the thief. We know him as whatever you want to know him as. Many, many, many names. He is their commander. Now, here's a job description. It's very clear what that job description is. Jesus tells us about it in John 10, verse 10. It says there, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all of its fullness. Jesus wants to give you life in all of its fullness. The thief, he wants to come and rob it. He wants to steal it from you. He wants to kill it and destroy it within you. All right. So if that is the thief's job description, what do you believe his cohorts would be about doing? What are all the demonic powers? What are all the demonic spirits? What are those that are waging war against us? What are they coming out to do and, uh, in our life? Friends, can I put it to you today? They are also looking to steal and rob and destroy from you. They're looking to kill something in you. Friends, what is it most? What is it most? What is it that the enemy, the thief, is wanting most to take from you? What is it that his cohorts want most to destroy in you? You know, in one word, we can sum it up in one word. What He wants to take from you the most is your confidence. Everyone say confidence. How many of you know the enemy, he wants to steal your confidence. He wants to take your confidence. He wants to remove it from you any way he can. Because when your confidence is gone, it's then that he can begin to intimidate you. How many of you ever feel intimidated? Give me a wave if you ever feel intimidated. I gotta tell you, there's times where I feel intimidated. When I was 16, getting the punch in the face, I felt intimidated. But you know, in comparison to some of the times in my life when I've been trying to get spiritual breakthrough for different people, different things, different seasons, well, that punch in the face was nothing. Friends, I tell you the truth. The enemy wants to steal your confidence because when that is gone, he can step up into your face and into your, into your, into your space and he can begin to intimidate you begins to put the screws on that you feel intimidated like you can't do this. Begin to get on the back foot. How many of you know you can't fight the good fight of faith on the back foot? How many of you know you can't fight on the back foot? You've got to be on the front foot. You've got to be, you've got to get, you've got to be leaning in. You've got to be pressing in. You've got to be laying hold. You've got to be moving forward. But the enemy wants to intimidate you and steal your confidence so that you're, you're not on the offence anymore, but you're on the defence and looking for a place to hide. How many of you know that's what happens? When you, when you lose your confidence, when, when you're feeling intimidated, you'll be on the back foot and before you know it, you'll be wanting to hide away, just like David's brothers were wanting to hide away. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 19. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Ha! How many of you think I wouldn't do it? <laughs> I say, ha, huh, David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. Now, how many of you know that's what the Bible says? The Bible says they were fighting against the Philistines. How many of you believe they were fighting against the Philistines? No. They weren't fighting against the Philistines. What were they doing against the Philistines? They were hiding from the Philistines, which I think is really funny because in theory, they should have been fighting the Philistines, but they were hiding from the Philistines. Why were they hiding from the Philistines? Because they lost their confidence and now they were being intimidated. When you're intimidated, you, you want to hide away. You want to remove yourself from everyone and everything. You just want to hide away. In fact, this is what 1 Samuel 17 verse 24 says. 
as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they didn't even get a punch in the face. They didn't get anything. As soon as they saw him from right across the valley, right across, right across, as soon as they saw him, the Bible says that they began to run away in fright. When they, when they saw him, they began to run. When they heard him, they began to run. Uh, they were running because they were intimidated and they lost their confidence. But when Saul was, when Saul saw what was going, uh, sorry, David, when David saw what was going on, how many of you know, for 40 days now, this has been going on. 40 days, so Goliath comes out, oh, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to slice you up, slice, dice. Uh, I'm going to do it all to you. Straight away, everyone runs off. The people of God were running for their life. David turns up on the scene. Here comes Goliath. David's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go stick this sucker. And he's like, he says to Saul, let me go. Saul goes, you can't do that. You can't do that. Praise God for fathers in the faith. But praise God for fathers in the faith who see the best in us and see what we can do and don't tell us all the time what we can't do. So here we have, here we have Saul saying to what is effectively a spiritual son and he's saying, no, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. How many of you have ever been told you can't do it? You can't do it because you're too young. How many of you have ever been told you're too young? Give me a wave if you've been told you're too young. All right. How many of you have been told you're too old? (laughs) So half the room is too young, the other half is too old. How many of you have ever gone for a job and you're overqualified? You're underqualified. You're too black, you're too red, you're too green, you're too white. You're too boy, you're too girl, you're too whatever. How many of you know, everyone wants to say you're too, too, too. But how many of you know there is a God who believes in you and He put His Spirit in you, He put His Word in you, that when the Goliaths in life come, you might stand up and you might enter into the battlefield. So here comes, here comes David, Saul saying, don't do it. But David persisted and he said, I've been taking care of my father's sheep. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club. Praise God, he's a Western suburbs boy. I go, I go after it with a club and I take the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. I reckon the RSPCA would have something to say about that. <laughs> Bang. I have done this to both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who saved me from the, the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. So David's confidence, hear this church, David's confidence. Uh, you know what I think? I think Christians have got sometimes a bit of a warped perspective. They're thinking, burp, 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 burp. they're thinking that once they come to Christ, all the battles have been won and it's all over. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. How can you be victorious if you're not in the battle? How can you be a victor unless you take the field? How can you, how can you, how can you, how can you see the glory of God? The one wonder of God, the power of God. Unless you actually step up and fight for something. And so, so here we have a scenario where, where David's confidence has grown. It didn't grow because he read a book on confidence. Look into the mirror and say 13 times a day. That's not going to do anything. When the, when the Goliath comes, you're going you're to wet your pants. It's like that. No, 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 no. David's confidence grew. Because before he got to Goliath, he went and fought a lion. Before he got to Goliath, he went and fought a bear. Now, I know there would be some people that would say because he was handsome and ruddy, then, then he probably never got a scratch. He never, I don't believe that for a minute. I, I believe he got scratched. In fact, I reckon if you took his shirt off, you, you, might, you might see this scar here. And you might see that scar there. And you might see that, that imprint here. You might see where the fangs went in there because he's fighting lions and bears, fighting lions and bears. And it's like, the Bible doesn't say that. I know the Bible doesn't say that, but have you ever fought a, have you ever fought a wild animal? I've got to tell you once I fought a rabbit. <laughs> they get their claws in deep. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bled, a bled man, bled everywhere. <laughs> They're vicious little mongrels. Anyway, moving right along. So here we, have the, here we have David, it's fought the lion and the bear. 
You know what? Here's what I'd say. As in this, this only me. I'll always be wary of someone who doesn't have a scar. I, 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 don't want, I don't want to be too close to people who don't walk with a bit of a limp. People who have never gone through anything. Yeah, they can, they can preach with the best of them. But I want to know when the enemy comes, are they going to be by my side? Or are they going to run off like my little mate did? Where are these people going to be when the enemy attacks them? Are they going to stand their ground and begin to speak words of faith? Because they fought the lion and they fought the bear and now they're prepared for Goliath. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Even Jacob, who had to wrestle the Lord, walked with a limp after that. We're going to get into some stuff along the way. Just because you get into some stuff and you get a claw to the head or you get a paw to the, the back or whatever. Don't go shrinking back and saying, oh, you can have this. No, no, no. When the enemy comes and he begins to strike at you, you've got to make a decision. I am not going to shrink back. I am not going to pull back. I'm not going to throw away my confidence, but I'm going to put my hope in God. I'm going to put my trust in God. And I'm going to keep, keep turning up. It's like, devil, you want to fight me? Mm-hmm. It amazes me how many people, <laughs> we don't see him at church for four weeks and it's like, what's the matter? <laughs> Someone said something to me. <laughs> grow up. Just grow up. I can understand it if you've been a Christian for three minutes. You speak to people who've been Christians for years and it's like, oh, that person said something that hurt my feelings. Hurt your feelings. What is this? Kindergarten? Are we men and women of God? Are we in the army of God? Are we in play school? Anyway, I'm glad I got that off my chest. So David's confidence wasn't gained from a book or any other. It was gained on the battlefield. So when Goliath stepped up, he didn't... He didn't intimidate David, but that was his whole point. I'm going to come out, I'm going to scream at you, and you're going to run away. But David's confidence was in the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 41. Goliath walked out toward David. Remember, he's done this 40 days and 40 nights. Every day it happens. Well, we know how it works. All right, so I'm the big buffhead, and I come out and I intimidate you, and then you all run away. But how many of you know something is about to change? In 2017, something is about to change. Brothers and sisters, get this in your heart. Get it in your spirit. Make a decision right here, right now. I'm not going to be intimidated by this any longer. I'm not going to be intimidated. Have a listen to this. I love this. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at the ruddy-faced boy. Sneering in contempt. He's like, who do you think you are, Reuben? You little South American dude, you. You're never going to do anything. I'm going to eat you. How many of you know, that's what he does. He sneers in contempt. All the girls in the house, I've got no doubt, there'll be men who have sneered at you, said you're just a girl. You're never going to do anything. Can I, can I say to you, a real father would never say that. To all the girls in this house, I tell you the truth. When you got the Spirit of God in you and you got the Word of God in you, all things are possible to those who believe. If you've got a dream, rise up and live it now. Don't be shrinking back saying, I've always been told I'm, going to, I'm just a girl. You're not just a girl. You're a woman of God who's been bought by the blood of Jesus that's been set apart to do great and mighty works in Jesus' name. Now rise up in your authority and walk as a woman of God. Walk as a woman of God. And here he comes, the devil, just uh, the thief, the Goliath, the giant, the ugly one, sneering in contempt at the ruddy-faced boy. Am I a doggy, roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the name of, names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh <laughs> to the birds and the wild animals, Goliath yelled. Now, this is a part where David is meant to turn on his heels and run and hide. But he doesn't. He doesn't. What does he say? Let's get the next scripture up, guys. Please help, help. Uh, mm, I don't know. David shouted in reply. So he's meant to be running. Goliath's thinking, excuse me, it doesn't work like this. 
You're meant to be leaving stage left. David's like, you want a piece of me? Come here. This is what he says. David shouted and replied, you come to me with a sword, a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel and everyone will know that the Lord does not need weapons to rescue His people. It is His battle, not ours. The Lord will give you to us. The Lord will give you to us. Friends, I want to encourage you today. Why are we so timid? Why are we so fearful? The battle isn't even ours. The battle belongs to the Lord and He's going to bring about the victory. We just need to turn up in faith and play our part and all of heaven is going to be behind us. Church, you don't need to be intimidated any longer. Fear not, fear not. Trust in the Lord. Some of us have lost ground because the enemy's come out and just sneered at us. It's like, hey, comes out and he sneers. It's just sneering in contempt. You're never going to be able to do this. You'll never get that business off the ground. You'll never get involved in that ministry. You'll never be able to. You'll never do it. He's sneering. We've just given up ground, given up ground in our relationships, in our lives, finances, health, etc., all because of a sneer. I don't know about you. I'm sick of hearing the enemy sneers. Sick of hearing the enemy sneers. If you're tired of hearing the enemy sneers and you want to hear heaven's cheers, then you've got to make a choice now. You've got to make a decision now. Friends, can I encourage you as we enter 2017, do not throw away your confidence. Do not throw away your confidence. You know what I believe? It's what I believe. The enemy comes to rob, kill and destroy. Rob, steal and destroy. Call it whatever you want. I don't believe he can actually steal your confidence So, I actually think it's yours and it's in your heart. My heart, my responsibility. Above all else, guard your heart. For from it flow all the issues of life. Where is your confidence held? It's held within your heart. He will come and He'll punch. He'll come and He'll stab. He'll come and He'll chase you. He'll come and He'll beat you. He'll come and He'll take certain things, but He cannot take your confidence. You've got to make a choice. I'm going to put my confidence in God. This is what Scripture says, Hebrews 10.35, as the worship team come. So do not throw away your confidence. So do not throw away your confidence. So do not throw it away. Oh my Lord. Like I said, I'm ready to pick a fight today. Do not throw it away. 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 Wish I could just get you all in my car and take you to Aubrey and say it all the way to Aubrey. Do not throw it away. Do not throw it away. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. For in just a very little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. But my righteous one, are there any righteous ones in the house today? That's good. Praise God. We've got 14 people that know they're righteous. Are there any righteous ones in the house of God today? All right. But my righteous one, ones will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But... I like this but. Everyone say but. Say but, but, but. But we are not of those who shrink back. But you are not. We're not going to let you. We're going to hound you. We're going we're to poke you. We're going to. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed. But of those who believe and are saved. We're stepping in together in the 2017. And right here, right now, you're going to set yourself up for an incredible year and an incredible life. But you're going to miss a moment. You've got to choose. What are you going to choose? Are you going to be intimidated by the sneers of the enemy? Or are you going to live in such a way that brings the cheers of heaven? Live in such a way that brings the cheers of your peers without any beers. You're going to live in a way that brings the cheers from your peers. You're going to live in such a way that brings the cheers 
of your brothers and sisters that you fellowship with? Are you going to live in such a way? You know what? I want to live in such a way that brings the cheers of my wife. I want to be her hero. I won't be her hero if I'm hiding under the sink. I've got to get up on the front foot and lead my family in Christ Jesus and serve them like Jesus serves the church. I know my wife would want to hear the cheers of myself. George, you would want to hear me cheering her on. I want to hear the cheers of my children and I want to cheer my children on. But how many of you know if we're going to hear the cheers of heaven rather than the sneers of the intimidator, we need to choose to live a faith-filled life. How many of you get that? We're going to choose in just a minute before we get there. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Friends, we are starting 2017. The most important thing is this, the most important, most, most, the most important thing as we enter 2017 is that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. You, you can't live a life of faith through someone else's relationship with God. You can't live a life of faith because your grandmother knew the Lord or because you've got a school friend who knows God. No, no, you can only live a life of faith if you are in personal relationship with God. We enter into personal relationship with God the Father through God the Son. Jesus is His name. Jesus said, there's only one way to heaven. Only one way to heaven. There's only one way to the Father. There's only one way and that way, that way is Jesus. Friends, I tell you the truth. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the Bible also says that there is a free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ to everybody who would believe in Him. So today I'm going to give you the opportunity, not just in a moment to step into a newfound confidence in God, but before we get there, I want to give you the opportunity to step into a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Friends, you just need to receive the free gift of salvation that it comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So from the front to the back, from our right to the left, all over this auditorium today, if you're in this room and you don't know Jesus, maybe you used to know Jesus but have fallen away. Maybe, maybe you just came to church with a friend, but you're sitting here and your heart is beating at 100 mile an hour and you know something on the inside is happening. Something on the inside is shifting and stirring. And it's like, what is this? What is this that I'm feeling? If you're feeling that, it's the call of God. It's the call of heaven. Jesus is reaching out to you today. He wants you to come home to God the Father and He wants you to receive salvation through His life. He gave His life that you might have life and you might enter into relationship with His Father that you might come into relationship with Him and have your sins forgiven and begin a brand new life. So from the front to the back, from my right to the left, all over this auditorium, my friend, my friend, my friend, if you're here today and you're not right, you're not in right relationship with God, but you're saying, Shane, today's the day. I want to get my life sorted. I want to get my stuff sorted. I want to get my, 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 get my relationship with God worked out at the beginning of the year so I might live this incredible life you're talking about. Friend, if that is you today, on the count of three, I want you to lift up your hand. When you lift it up, don't just lift it up a little bit. When you lift it up, lift it all the way up. When I see your hand go up, I'm going to point at you. I'm going to say, God bless you. The moment I point at you and say, God bless you, the Spirit of the living God is going to come upon you and a brand new life is going to begin. It's really as quick as that, as simple as that. You just need to receive this gift by faith. Are you ready today? From the front to the back, from my right to the left, all over the auditorium. If you're here today and you're saying, Shane, today's the day. I want to receive this free gift of salvation. I want to receive this life in Jesus Christ. I want it today. If that is you, on the count of three, won't you raise your hand now? Are you ready, my friends? Here we go. On the count of three, get ready to lift up that hand. Here we go. One, two, three. Right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, if you're here and you're saying, that's me, God bless you, sis. God bless you. Good job. Who else today? God bless you. 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 God bless you down here. God bless you. Well done. Who else today saying, Shane, that's me. God bless you, sister. Well done. Good decision. Good choice. Over here. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. Who else today saying, Shane, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Who else today saying, Shane, that's me. I want to give my life to Christ. Anybody else? Anybody else? I just don't want to miss out on anybody. Praise God. Why don't we all stand to our feet really quickly? really quickly. All right. All right. We're going we're gonna to pray together for all those that are receiving Jesus. Then we're going to pray really quickly for everybody who's ready to step back into the battle and begin to fight again. Get your confidence back. So for everybody that just said yes to Jesus, can we all pray together, church? Is that okay? All right. Let's not be moving around unless we absolutely have to. All right. So if you raise your hand, just repeat this. Pray it from your heart. Then after the service, someone from our new life department is going to come to you. If nobody comes to you, 
If you saw someone hand, someone put their hand up and no one comes to them, just bring them down the front. I'll be standing right here for five minutes after the service. Let's all pray together. Dear Jesus, I thank You today for bringing me to this place that I might give my life to You. Today, Jesus, I give You my life. I give You my all. I ask You, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Saviour, be my God, be my friend. I ask You, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Help me, Lord, to live a life that's pleasing and honouring of You. Today, Lord, I give You my life. I give You my all. I ask You, Jesus, be my God. In Jesus' Name, everybody said, Amen. Come on. Let's give it up for all our new brothers and sisters. Let's give it up for Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who's drawing people to Himself. All right, if you're here today and you know that you've been on the back foot, how many of you, how many of you know when you know? But I don't think it's not like we need an examination to work this thing out. You know it when you know it. Yeah, I've been on the back foot. I've been on the back foot in areas of my life. I've been on the back foot in my marriage. I've been on the back foot with my kids. I've been on the back foot with family. I've been on the back foot with my health. I got this doctor's report and I was like, since hearing that, it's just freaking me out. I'm on the back foot. I got an accountant's report. The accountant said this, the accountant said that. I'm on the back foot. I'm on the back foot. I'm on... If you're tired of being on the back foot and you're saying, I want to come back out and get back into the fight. I want to put my trust back in God again. Friends, can I encourage you? You don't need to go fight Goliath this afternoon. Maybe on the way home though, you could find a cat. Not literally. Maybe there's some small giants you could fight. But maybe let's just start at the beginning again. Let's just go fight what is before us right now, right now. Let's just get back in. Let's just put our trust back in God. And you watch how God will turn up for you. I got a feeling this year is going to be the year. But you got to get back into the fight. When the enemy sneers, he's contempt at you. Just say, blow it out your ear. I'm not going to listen to this garbage anymore because I have a Lord who saved me. The same Lord who delivered David from the paw of the lion is the same Jesus who's going to deliver me from this situation. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to bow down any longer. I'm coming out to fight. I'm going to put my confidence back in God. You know why some of us aren't confident? Because we're intimidated. I want to pray for confidence before that. If you feel intimidated, raise both hands towards God. We're going to break this right now. The devil would put the spirit of intimidation upon God's people that they would fear and run and run and run and would never come to the fight. Because as long as we're running, we're never going to be victorious. Father, in Jesus' Name, we stand in the house of God. We stand on holy ground. We bind and we break and we smash the spirit of intimidation. We say no longer will the children of God be intimidated by the sneering and the contemptuous acts of the devil. From this day on, Lord God, we will not be a people, Lord God. We will not be a people who are intimidated. We will not be a people who are fearful. Lord, Your Word says that You did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Lord, we're going to walk in the love of God. We're going to walk in the power of God. We're going to walk in the self-discipline that comes through a Spirit-led life, Lord God. Lord, we refuse any longer to stay under the spirit of intimidation. But Lord, we stand in the house of God with hands raised to You. If you want confidence like you've never had confidence before, raise your hands right now. Higher, higher, higher. Reach to heaven. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come and we surrender our lives under the Word of God. We surrender our lives under the Spirit of God. We come under the name of Jesus, Lord. We come under the banner that has the name Jesus over it. We declare in Jesus' name, we will not shrink back any longer. We will not be on the back foot. We will not be intimidated. We will not be running and hiding. But from this day, Lord God, when the enemy comes out and he sneers at us, Lord God, those contemptuous words, Lord God, we are going to rise up in faith. And we're going to do what David did, Lord. We're going to begin to speak the words of God. We're going to begin to pray. Prophesy in Jesus' name. We're going to pull out the stone of offence, Lord God, and we're going to, Lord, kill the enemy. Lord, we're coming after anything that would come after us. We're coming after anything that would come after our families. 
We're coming after anything that you have ordained in our life. Lord, we will not, we will not, we will not shrink back any longer. But Lord, this year, we're taking it all in Jesus' name. We're taking it back. We're taking it back. We will not, Lord God, want to run from the fight. We're going to run to the fight. In fact, we're going to pick some fights. Pick some fights. Brothers and sisters, get up. Get angry. Get angry in the Holy Ghost. Get angry in the Holy Ghost. Go pick the fights in Jesus' name. If it's yours, then take it back. If it's yours, take it back. You don't don't need to shrink back. You don't need to be running away. You need to run to see these enemies defeated in your life. This is here. Breakthrough is here. Why don't we give God some incredible praise right now. Praise God.